So today I'm going to show you a complete edit in Premiere Pro from start to finish, including import and export. Also some transitions, some titling, some keyframing, some color correction. And we're also going to add some music. So in this video, you're going to learn the essentials of Premiere Pro so you can get editing straight away. And I'm going to teach you all this in 20 minutes, actually 17 minutes to be precise. So grab yourself a pen and paper to make some notes. Let's jump straight into Premiere Pro and start the edit. So when Premiere Pro is open, you're going to want to, first of all, start a new project. So the video I'm going to use today is a style shoot that I've just recently shot. Select that folder and I'm going to save it as Premiere Edit Tutorial. And that'll open up our project. This is the screen that you'll get first of all. So the workspace I'm going to use today is the standard editing workspace, but if you do want to customize it and make it your own. You'll just go to Window, Workspaces, and you can basically customize the workspace however you want to use it. But for the purpose of today's tutorial, I'm going to leave it as the standard editing workspace. First thing you're going to want to do is import media. So you're going to go to your import media section in the bottom left, double click on that, and it will bring up your file finder. So find the file you want to import your footage from, which is this one here. So I'm going to import the whole folder. So you can either import individual files or you can just import the whole folder. So now our footage is in Premiere Pro, here we go. What you might want to do is if you click on these icons in the bottom left hand corner of this box, you can change the, the view. So I'm going to change it to icon view. And what you get then is you get the actual videos. So you can scroll through each video without even having to put it into the source monitor. So that's quite handy. Just click on the video and scroll through it. If we go back to list view, you can also see your frame rates and all the video info here. So let's go back to icon view and let's go to our first video. Double click on it and it'll bring it up into our source video window here. I don't want the whole of this clip in the video. So what you do is scan through the video to the bit you want. I'm going to take it from, so I'm just going to tap I on my keyboard. That will give me my in point and then I just want out there. Okay, so that's all of the clip that I want. And to bring it into our actual timeline, you just grab the video, so you just click on it and drag it onto the timeline. And there you go, it just put it straight on your timeline for you. So whichever resolution, frame rate, etc., the video is, it will make that sequence tally up with that. So if you go to now the sequence and look at the sequence settings, it's basically pulled the same sequence settings that were in the video onto the timeline. So if you want to adjust your sequence settings, then you just go to sequence, sequence settings, and you adjust it all here. But for the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to use the same sequence and resolution from our source video. What we're going to do is we're going to go through each video and pick the bits we want. So let's have a look at this one. Just want our eyes opening. So from there, I'm going to click I and then O. And then again, if you wanted to drag just the audio or just the video, then you've got these two options here. You can drag video only or drag audio only. So I'm just going to drag the video only because I don't need the audio. So I'm just going to drag the video only into our timeline. I'm going to go to the next video, find the bit we want. That's the kiss. So we're going to go in there, I, and out there. O and drag the video only onto our timeline. We'll zoom out the timeline by hitting minus, just so I know where I am. Okay, we go to the next clip, double click on it. And I just want her looking up at the Halloween cake. That's a real cake, that by the way, which is pretty cool. Uh, and two about there, so out. And again, we will drag the video only into our timeline. And the last video is just a couple together. Find the bit we want. In. No, actually, we want that. So, in, just raising the head up, looking at him, smile. And out. Okay. So we've now got the footage on the timeline. As you can see, all our footage there. Say for this one, we decided that we want to stop it here. 
So we basically just want to get rid of the end of that clip. You would just click C on your keyboard, which will give you your cut tool. You'd click where you want to cut, go back to V, which will take you back to the pointer tool. Click on the bit you don't want, delete it, then click on the gap, hit delete again, and there we go. That part of the clip is now gone. Out of your timeline. Really easy. So it's really intuitive this timeline. It's just C for cut, V to go back for your pointer tool, job done. So you just tidy up your clips that way. So you've got your clips in the timeline. Maybe you want some transitions. You would just go to your effects tab here. In your effects tab, you can see all these different options. So we're gonna to go to video transitions. And then you've got all your different transitions you can have. I just want a simple dissolve. So I'll click on dissolve, cross dissolve. And I'll put one at the start. So you just drag it to the start of the film. And say I want to cross dissolve in on each clip, you just drag it onto each clip. Bang, 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 bang. And maybe I want to cross dissolve at the end as well. Okay, and say I want shorter dissolves on the clip, then all you would do is grab the dissolve and just move it in and out as much or as little as you want. And maybe bring that one in a little bit, that one in a little bit, that one in a little bit. And there you go, that's how you do your cross dissolves. Got other options here, you can dip to white, dip to black, an additional dissolve where it flashes. So there's loads of different options. You want to play around with them, find out which dissolves work best for you. But that's how you would do your dissolves. Okay, so now we've got the film, we've got the dissolves, we've got our fade in, we've got our fade out. So what's next? You might want titles. So if we just move our whole project, so you just highlight it all and then just move it right. And then in this gap here, click on the type tool and then click in this empty box and we can put some titles in there. So let's just call it Gothic Edding. So if you want to do anything with this text, all you would do, you go to the graphics tab at the top, click on that and it'll bring up all these options on the right hand side. You just want to go to edit and if you want to center this, you just click this horizontal center you can also vertical center it as well so we're vertical center horizontal center and here you can also change the you can change the font so let's just change it to something a bit more classy Madonna. and what you might want to do is go back to the vertical center and horizontal center because the different fonts tend to off center it a little bit now we've got the text for our video so we'll just go back to our editing tab and we'll just move this over. And we'll just slot that out to the start of our video. And we'll probably want a cross dissolve on the start of that. So we've still got our effects tab open. So we just drag our cross dissolve over. And what we want, might now want to do here is delete the dissolve that's already there and then put a cross dissolve in between that and the first clip. So now we've got our cross dissolve in, we've got our titles leading into our film. That title looks a bit naff. I would use a different font and I'd probably do something a little bit different, but I'm just showing you how it works. We've got a title, we've got our video, and you can do the same thing at the end. So say you want to put the end at the end, you would just click on the end of the video, you go to your title tool, click on the blank space, type in the end, bring up your graphics tab, and then you would go to the edit section. You would center it horizontally and vertically. Go back to your editing tab, drag it over, put a dissolve on the end. And now at the end of the video, you've got the end credits. So you put any credits there as well. So again, there's loads of thing, different things you can do, but for the purpose of this tutorial, that's how you would put some credits in there. So you've got titles, you've got credits, you've got your film, you've got dissolves. So what else do we need? You might want to do some color correction on your clips. So let's click on this clip. So we'll click on the clip itself. And what you would do is you go to your color tab in the top and it will bring up this section down the right hand side and you can adjust the color on your clip. So say I want a bit more contrast on this clip. I would just click on this and bring it right or left, take a little bit of contrast out, 
It's actually all right, this one. Maybe I want some shadows on it. I'll bring the shadows left a bit and I'll get some shadows in the picture. Uh, all sorts of things you can do. I'm not going to go too much into color correction, but this is how you would color correct your clip. Um, you've got other tabs, creative tabs. You can adjust the curves, color wheels, you've got all sorts of stuff. There's a whole art to color correction, which I'm not going to go into now, but that's where you would color correct your clips. Even if you don't really know what you're doing with color correction, Here's where you go to do some really basic stuff like add some contrast or bring the shadows down a little bit or by using these sliders here. So that's really simple. Okay, and then you go back to your editing tab. It's really nice having these tabs across the top because you can just go in between each tab really quickly and easily. I love the simplicity of how this works. Okay, so we've got titles, we've got credits, we've got a film, we've got dissolves. We've now got a bit of color correction. You can do that on each individual clip. So you want to make your video a little bit more interesting. Let's do a bit of keyframing. So you go into our effect controls in the source monitor. Maybe I want to do a zoom at, at the end of this clip to go into the next clip. OK, anything with a stopwatch next to it has the possibility to keyframe all these different options you've got for keyframing. Say like I want to create a zoom. I'm just going to click on that stopwatch there and then I'm going to move this across and I'm going to scale it up. Let's go mad, let's go 200, so double. And I'm going to move that to the end of the clip. And now what you see happening is before it goes to the next clip, it's just going to zoom up into the next clip. You can do all sorts, so you can rotate the clip. So let's do that, let's, let's do a 180. So let's click on the stopwatch and then we'll rotate the clip 180 degrees. All right, so now it's going to scale it up and rotate it 180 degrees. There you go. Looks rubbish, but you can see how the keyframing is really simple and easy to use. I'm going to get rid of that rotation because it looks ridiculous. You can really add some dynamics to your film just by using these keyframes. There's loads of tutorials. I'll be doing some in the future showing you how to keyframe your films, give them a bit of dynamics. But as you can see, you can do loads of different stuff with those. And you can do it on each individual clip just in the source modules. So that's cool. So say you want to add some color to the whole project and not just each individual clip. And this is how you do it. You go to your bin. You're going to go to new item and you're going to go to adjustment layer. Click on OK. And you're going to drag that adjustment layer onto your timeline. And you don't really want it over the titles or credits, but you want it over the rest. So you just drag it to fill the area that you want to color correct. So I'm going to add a LUT to this whole project. Now a LUT is just a color lookup table. I won't go into this in this tutorial. It's a good way of, of adding a nice color grade to your films. So I'm going to click on this. I'm going to go to effect controls. I'm going to go to effects down here and I'm going to go to my video effects. I'm going to go to color correction and I'm going to go to lumetri color and bang that's added that to the adjustment layer. I'm then going to go to creative. So I'm going to find a LUT that I use quite a lot and I'm going to drop that onto my adjustment layer. Okay and now what you'll see is every clip has this LUT added to it. I can toggle it on and off. That's off and that's on. Very subtle, but off, on, off, on. And now that's on every every clip. I don't need to go into each clip to apply this color grade. Anything that I drop into that adjustment layer will apply to all the clips below it. So that's cool. And while we're down in this section, if you if you want to toggle this on and off, if you click this eye icon, that will turn that layer on and off. So if you ever want to turn a layer on and off, you just use this eye icon. So if you click that and there's a line through it, it means that layer is no longer being used in the project. Okay, we'll leave it on for now. We've got our video pretty much. Now we might want to add a song to it. So you just click in the left hand corner, find the file where your music file is kept. So I'm just going to click open. And it brings the file down into my bin. And then I'm just going to drag that across onto my timeline. And you can see the song doesn't really start. So I'm gonna, I could either cut that or I can just drag it to where I want it to start. Okay, and then I'll drag that across. 
And as you can see, I'm not going to want any of that song after that. So I'll click my cut tool, see? I cut that bit off, go back to V, click on it, delete, and that's gone. Now what I want to do now is I'm going to want a dissolve on this part of the song. So I'm going to go to my effects tab. I'm going to go to audio transitions. I'm going to go to crossfade. I'm going to, probably going to need that fade that out from there. So I'll drag it across to there and there we go. And now we've got music for our video. So let's just play the video. So now we've got a few transitions, we've got color correction, we've got a song now. So let's just play the video. Now we've got our film, it's finished, we're pleased with it, we want to export it. So, what you do, go to File, you can go to File, Export, Media, or you can just Control M on your keyboard. Okay, so that'll bring up our export options. Leave it on H264, and very rarely you'd want to change it from that, so that's the standard export format for video. You can match the source that it's already at, so you can just match all the settings with the original video, or there are custom presets if you're wanting to export to YouTube. So let's say you want to export a full HD video to YouTube, you just select the YouTube 1080p full HD, bang. You change your output name, we want to save it to, so Crab Apple Street Barn, and we're just going to call it Gothic Test. Use Rack's maximum render quality, but always I would select that one. And then you can either export it straight out or you can queue it, which will send it to export via media encoder. So let's just export it straight out. That's it. Edit from start to finish, done. Cool, so don't go anywhere yet. If you have enjoyed this video, then please do give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel for more editing tips and tricks. Make sure you ding that bell so I can let you know when new tutorials are released. If you do want to know the best export settings for your videos for YouTube, then please do check out this video here and I'll tell you. So thanks for watching. Catch you in the next video.